Hello, Cougar Nation, and welcome to another Coaches Weekly for this season of Men's Soccer at Concordia Chicago. I'm Jonathan Shear with the Cougar Sports Network, and back on the show this week is head coach of that soccer team, Brad Callahan. Thanks for having me, Jonathan. And thanks for coming back, Coach. With coming to the team, the first of your final three games came and went this past Saturday. And along with that, your push to earn a conference playoff spot suffered a big blow in a 5-4 to four shocker loss to Concordia, Wisconsin. And there was a lot we could touch on from that game. There's some good parts. There's some bad parts. But no spotable is one of those downsides in that your team had a 3 to nothing lead with about 23 minutes remaining and then lost 5-4. to four. What was the biggest problem you saw from your team in that second half collapse? Um, this is something I've talked about with the team, and I think it's just going to take repetitions, but I think you got to play the same way you played in the first minute and the 90th minute. I think they started to get too defensive. Mm-hmm. We let um, Concordia, Wisconsin have the ball too much, and they started getting opportunities. You could kind of feel the momentum shifting, and the thing is, you know, we have to transition on offense. We have to get numbers up on offense in order to create space, possess the ball, and I think our guys thought the game was won. And I mean, I talked about it at halftime because we were up 2-0 at half and they seemed pretty confident. And I was telling them, like, the score could easily be 2-0 the other way. Yeah. You know, the goals we got were a little bit sloppy. They had some really good looks on goal that we got lucky they didn't score. Um, so I think the mentality just needs to be, you know, do everything complete. Don't be satisfied with some things being swept under the rug. Um, And I mean, mistakes were made. And so like what I've talked about is if there's a team that's better and and they perform better, then that's that's all right. But I think the mentality needs to be, you know, regardless of the score, whether we're up 10, down 10, you take pride in your individual performance as a player and you do everything you can do, um, regardless of who your teammates are, regardless what the score is. You need to walk off the field and be happy with the way you played, knowing you gave everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And one of those individual performances that did stand out from that last game was one of your midfielders, Justin Ocampo, who scored two goals in his first game that he scored this season. And he's one of your newcomer transfer players this year. So we'll just to kind of focus on him since he kind of was one of those standout players from Saturday. How has he really developed into filling this team this year? Yeah, I think Justin's a very technical player. He's very smooth on the ball. Um, so yeah, his confidence and comfort on the ball is is great to have in the midfield. Um, he does a good job of possessing the ball and, and keeping it and being very calm on it, um, which is very valuable for us. Um, I've talked with him. I kind of want him to have a little more defensive presence um, in, in that way. Um, but I mean, he's yeah, he's a, a big impact this year. Very happy to have him. Absolutely. When you look at your roster as a whole this season, something you emphasize is a competitive culture with the team earning that playing time, earning those minutes. And as this season's gone on, for example, this past Saturday, you had only five players coming off of the bench, six players playing a full 90 minutes, which is a stark contrast to earlier in the season where you were mixing around with the players on the field a lot, 11 coming off of the bench in some games. So as you've developed that sort of more set starting 11, who have been some of your favorite players to watch really flourish Mm -hmm. this year? Well, first off, I think a part of that is a lot due to injury. So that's kind of, it's not necessarily I'm making that decision. It's kind of I'm forced to. Mm. Um, So like Ronaldo was out, Omar's out, Phillip's out, Isaac's out. So we have so many guys currently due to injury and illness or what have you. So yeah, that's... um, had a lot of guys missing, unfortunately, so not as much depth, which has hurt us. But yeah, in terms of your question with, uh, I think Julian Delgado has done a really good job. He's a freshman who wasn't getting a ton of minutes at the beginning, and now he's getting full 90s as a center back. He does a really good job. I mean, he's, he's quick. He doesn't stab in. He knows how to contain. He's done a great job. Um, you know, we've had some freshmen step up. Uh, Xavier Avia has stepped up, and Michael Sinise has done a good job as a freshman. Um, Christian Ibarra has been a, done a real good job as a freshman. You mentioned Justin. And then, you know, we've talked about some of the seniors yeah. before. Um, but, yeah, I think, I think um, you know, we have a really good, very solid core to build off of. It's just kind of ironing out some of these details. and Because um, right now I feel like we're just too inconsistent. 
we're, we're too inconsistent. We're too. Um, we need to get very habitual and disciplined about playing the correct way every game. Um, so I think we have a lot of tools to work with, but a lot of it is just, um, I think, being more disciplined about that. And that's something we've talked about. Yeah, definitely. Well, at the start of the season, looking back to the start of the year, one of the goals you kind of mentioned you had for your team was making a run in the conference playoffs this year. And now with two games remaining in the season, your team is sitting on the outside looking in at those playoffs with a very tough two games remaining, starting this Wednesday against Edgewood College, the top team in the conference this year. So as you head into those final two games, a tough road to try and have a chance to qualify those for those playoffs, what's your approach? What are you trying to bring your team out onto the field with for these final two weeks? I think kind of what I was just saying is like uh, playing as a team. You know, shifting on defense as a team, being disciplined as a team, playing smart, not taking unnecessary risks, um, not stabbing in. Like, you know, it's kind of it's kind of crazy to see what just happened in the Concordia Wisconsin game, um, and I, I think just giving a hundred percent effort all the time. You know, yeah. if, if you're tired, sub out. We have we have depth. Hopefully, we'll have a couple guys back from injury as well. Um, but I mean, it's just kind of weird how, you know, like I was looking, Hope is ranked, I think, 21st in the country. Yeah. Scored two goals on us. Somehow Concordia, Wisconsin, bottom of the conference, five. And I mean, you look at the conference, too. I saw IIT, who we beat 1 0, ties Aurora 5 5. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> and then the only team to tie Edgewood is Wisconsin Lutheran, who got beat by Lakeland. So, I mean, <laughs> just <laughs> if you're looking for consistency in the conference, it's not there. Yeah. Um, and so I guess that's kind of what I'm hoping to get from my guys is can we be consistent? Mm -hmm. Can we play the same game? Because how is MSOE scoring, you know, only two on us and then we're getting scored more against teams who aren't as doing as yeah. well. Um, and so I think kind of like, like I was just saying to you before the interview started, it's like, we'll run red lights and some days you'll get hit and some days you won't. And the only way to guarantee you don't get hit is you don't run red lights. Yeah. And so you got to do smart. We don't, we don't communicate enough. I think I have guys who just, I don't know what it is. They, they don't want to. They're shy or something. And uh, I've talked a lot about that is like, you know, we have to communicate. We have to communicate. We have to communicate in transition. We have to communicate on defense. Um, so I think it's just recognizing the full picture and not being comfortable with, oh, well, I do these four out of six things really good. That's who I am as a player. It's where, how can we develop as complete players? And maybe it's something simple, in my opinion, like communicating. That's the easy part of soccer, right? I yeah. could get a basketball player who's going to communicate. Yeah. So I think those sort of things, they have to be automatic. So that those are frustrating when those things aren't getting done properly. Absolutely. Well, thank you again, Coach, for coming on this week. And like we mentioned, the Cougars are back out on the pitch this Wednesday, right here in River Forest, taking on the Edgewood College Eagles at 2 p.m. You'll be able to follow that game live on the Cougar Sports Network and get caught up on any action you've missed from this season of Cougars soccer on cucougars.com. Once again, I'm Jonathan Shear with the Cougars Sports Network, and thank you for joining us for this week's Men's Soccer Coaches Weekly.